Imagine this. It's 2005. My country is in the middle of a devastating flood. One that's going to cost around 60% of its GDP. I have cousins, aunts and uncles all packed into my house. My house sits high up on stilts in a traditional manner of building. But theirs were newer homes built with ground level floors. As a result, they have chest deep water in the lower floors of their homes. One aunt finally evacuates after seeing snakes swimming in the living room. So everyone ended up at my house. Days turned to weeks. The last finally left after three months. Aid was delivered to my village. The distribution went house to house, but no one came to my home or to my neighbors. What was so different about us? Throughout this experience, one of the things that struck me most was how different groups of people had widely the similar experiences of the same physical event. At one village, the entire community was living on the highway, the only dry place left. Just down the road, there were people on jet skis making the most of their flood experience. How could there be such different contexts to the same event? Why were people's experiences so drastically different? Later, as a researcher, communities told me about how emergency releases of water from conservancies in one administrative region affected residents in the neighboring regions. Let's give some insight into the unintended consequences of decision making. The people deciding to release that water were only thinking about how it would affect persons living in their area of responsibility, not about the people on the other side of the river. So I saw how people were left out of the decision making process. How capacities used to combat the effects of one hazard can cause unintended impacts for other hazards, and how positive and negative effects of policies were based on where you looked and who you asked. I couldn't stop thinking about these communities and ended up studying social vulnerability, asking what's causing this common yet disproportionate suffering. One of the challenges I found was that decision makers were relying on generic models to figure out where to put resources where to invest in mitigation, how to spend their money. But these seldom accounted for the interrelated effects I saw across multiple hazard types and events. They tended to treat every place the same. But not every community sits on stilts like my home. Further, the focus was on such broad administrative scales that they couldn't reflect the different social dynamics occurring at local levels. Like why my home and my neighbors were skipped during that flood. My research now aims to improve those decision-making tools. I work with physical scientists and emergency managers to understand the hazards at play in their area and the types of resources and strategies in place to combat these. I also meet with communities to identify the livelihoods they employ, their interaction with other communities, and what all this means for how they are impacted by hazard events. I build maps and models of the physical and social conditions influencing the disasters we see unfold on TV and feel in person. Using different combinations of metrics based on the types of hazards present, the lifestyles of the affected people, and all that information on community interaction. These aren't static, but they adapt and morph from place to place. Emergency managers and disaster response agencies have validated the accuracy of my models and highlighted the nuances it allows them to discuss, often with administrators far removed from and unfamiliar with the areas experiencing hazard events. With these new tools, more accurate and more appropriate information is provided to decision makers. I'm helping to answer, how could there be such different context to the same event? Why are people's experiences so drastically different? The answers can guide decision making to reduce and maybe even prevent the highly disproportionate suffering seen during disasters. <laughs>